Adam and Eve, the first and the favored, heard the sound of their king and friend, the creator, God himself, as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. They hid from the Lord God among the trees. But God, friend and father, called to the man, where are you? Adam replied, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And the creator of all good things asked, who told you you were naked? Did you eat from the tree, the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Adam replied, Eve, the woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit and I ate it. Then God asked the woman, what is this you have done? Eve replied, the serpent, he deceived me and I ate. Then God said to the serpent, cursed are you. You will crawl on your belly and eat dust all the days of your life. I will make you the enemy of this woman and her children. The one who is to come will crush your head and you will strike his heel. In the bleak midwinter, frosty wind made stood hard as iron, water like a stone. Snow had fallen, snow on snow, snow on snow on snow. In the bleak
traditional service. Could you tell that? It's traditional in this aspect. It follows a format that is a very old traditional service of lessons and carols. That is a service of readings from scripture and songs of worship to God. But we have obviously made it a little bit contemporary. It fits us. But the purpose is not just to fit us. The purpose is to enable us to experience God afresh tonight. To experience the truth of Jesus having come into this world and come into our lives to make a real difference, to bring light and darkness and to bring restoration of what has been lost. And so welcome to our Christmas Eve service. Now the readings that we are going to be hearing tonight and seeing on the screen are readings from both the Old Testament which you've already heard in that very first element of the service from Genesis all the way through to the more traditional and familiar stories surrounding the birth of Jesus. But the Old Testament is included because God's plan of salvation through Jesus Christ didn't begin when Jesus was born. God's plan of salvation began even before humanity fell away. God's plan of salvation was announced right at the beginning in the Garden of Eden as soon as the need for salvation came about and God chose to work through a nation, the nation of Israel, the descendants of Abraham, who was faithful to God. And so we are the beneficiaries of these readings tonight. And I want to encourage you, don't just set it aside as an element that we've just added between the songs, but as something that God can use to speak to each one of our hearts tonight. Let me also invite you as best you can to participate in the singing because this is not a, a Christmas show, it's not a performance, this is a worship service and we want to invite you to worship using the Christmas carols and the Christmas songs that are part of the service to honor and glorify God and thank God for sending his son Jesus to save us. So please join in. Also one more thing that I want to draw to your attention is within your program you can find a card like this, it's called a connect card very simple for our Christmas Eve purposes and as an encouragement for you to complete that that allows us to stay in touch with you and let you know about some of the great things happening at Victory Church and it's not just about services it's about us together making a difference in the world we invite you to be a part of that so if you would complete one of these cards then for each card that we receive completed tonight we're going to make a five dollar donation donation to the Coordinated Homeless Outreach Center in Norristown. And they need our help. 
and uh, we want to be generous with them. And so for each card we get, we will give, on your behalf, $5 to Chalk. So that's going to go a long way. And then later on in the service, we'll be receiving an offering, and you can put that Connect card in the offering container when it goes by, okay? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come and worship Christ, the newborn King. Be real to us tonight. And Lord, whatever darkness we face, help it to be pushed aside by the light of your presence, the light of your love that is ours through Jesus. And it's in his name we pray. Amen. Speaking of the light of Jesus, you can see to my right, to your left, down at the front, a table on which we have placed a candle. And that is the Christ candle, representing the light of Christ coming to the world, and that's light is what we're here for. We have Reese Collins coming to help us see the light of Christ. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, a light no darkness can extinguish. Oh, come, oh, come,
The Lord had said to Abram, go from your country, your people, and your father's household to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and all the people they had acquired in Haran, and they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Abram traveled through the land as far as the site of the great tree of Morah at Shechem. At that time, the Canaanites were in the land. The Lord appeared to Abram and said, to your offspring, I will give this land. So he built an altar there to the Lord, who had appeared to him. And there he went on toward the hills east of Bethel and pitched his tent, with Bethel on the west and Ai on the east. There he built an altar to the Lord and called on the name of the Lord. Merry Christmas, Victory. Feel free to worship and sing with us.
walking in darkness has seen great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, for to us a son is given. And the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord, and he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge by what he sees with his eyes or decide but by what he hears with his ears, but with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. He will strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. With the breath of his lips he will slay the wicked. Righteousness will be his belt, and faithfulness the sash around his waist. The wolf will live with the lamb, the leopard will lie down with the goat, the calf and the lion and the yearling together, and a little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear, their young will lie down together, and the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den, and the young child will put its hand into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. No way. 
sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word to me be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. We welcome you to sing along with us as we worship the King tonight. Let's sing this together. Oh, holy night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior. is God. 
This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and had gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds turned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen which were just as they had been told. Yeah. 
Go tell your mother, your father, your brother, your sister. Go tell the world, life is set in the script. I'm lifting my praises every day. And no one can ever take that away. Jesus to be the for every season. And that's why the choir. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem and the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Merry Christmas, Victory Church. Wow, what a, what a rendition of Go Tell on the Mountain, right? Do you, you know that those, those, those words, those, those testimonies on the, on the screen behind them when they were singing were actual stories from actual people here at Victory Church? Isn't that an awesome thing? God is moving. God is doing awesome, awesome things. Well, my name is Jason Necklin. I'm the executive pastor here at Victory, and I'm excited to lead us in our next act of worship, our giving. In just a few minutes, we're going to receive an offering. There's some different ways people love to give here at Victory, and they're on the screens to my left and to my right. And just a reminder, as the red containers pass by in just a few minutes, you can place your offering and your completed Connect card in the buckets when they go by. And don't forget that for every, uh, every Connect card completed that we receive, we're going to donate $5 to the Coordinated Homeless Outreach Center in Norristown. So don't forget to fill that out. You can do that now and place it in the container when it goes by. 
Well, Christmas is a season of giving, and we've received such an awesome gift in the birth of Jesus, and we have an opportunity to give back. We have an opportunity just, just to help other people. And, and Paul lays that out in the Bible in, chap, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 3 and 4. Praise be to God, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles, so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves receive from God. You see, the call is, is clear, and it's out of our comfort, out of the blessings that we have received, that we have the opportunity to comfort others. And I'm so excited to be a part of a church that doesn't just reserve its comfort for inside the four walls of this building. But we love to bless and help our community. In, in just this past September, we were able to lead the Norristown Day of Hope with over 2,000 hours of community service performed. And we led that effort as a church. In December, we were able to fund, fully fund a food truck donating $15,000 to the Philly Dream Center to make it possible to provide free meals to over 300 children on a daily basis coming in 2020. And on Christmas Day, and just tomorrow afternoon, we're going to be able to have hundreds of volunteers serve four Christmas dinners in Phoenixville and in Norristown. See, we're able to do what Paul says in the Bible when we provide the people in our community with comfort in the form of service and meals and just love. In this Christmas season, I, we thank you for your help to, to accomplish those things this past year. It's not possible without your gifts, without your giving. And we also look forward to what is going to be given tonight so we have an opportunity to do even more in the coming year. Even more comfort and joy to spread around our community. I'm going to pray before we receive the offering. Dear Lord, thank you for sending Jesus. Thank you for the comfort you provide us in all facets of our life. Help us to comfort those in trouble. Bless this offering. In Jesus' name, amen. The ushers can begin to pass the containers right now. And also in your, in your program, you're going to find an invite card. Starting the first week of January, January 5th to January 6th, starting a new series called Great God, Full Hearts, Can't Lose. And I want to invite you back to come on the, that Sunday at 9.15, 11.15, or that Monday evening at 7.15. We have Monday services the same as Sunday services. Again, starting in January 5th, we'll start a new series, Great God, Full Hearts, Can't Lose. We'd love to see you there. If you turn your attention to the screens for our next reading. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through Him all things were made. Without Him nothing was made that has been made. In Him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him, yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision or a husband's will, but born of God. The word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son, who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. Good evening, everyone. How you doing tonight? I want to invite everyone, if you could, to stand up on your feet. We're going to praise and worship Jesus Christ because, after all, this is all for him. It's all about Jesus. Can I get two or three people to agree with me that this is all about Jesus? Hallelujah. We worship you, Father. He's worthy. Come on, let's sing. Jesus had the center of it all. Jesus had the center of it all. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Jesus, come on, everyone sing. Jesus 
He brings light where there's darkness. Where there is destruction, He brings restoration. God sent Jesus to rebuild what was broken in this world. And that applies not only to all of His creation, it applies to us individually. When I was a kid, about 8, 10 years old, my family went to visit another family in another state, and this family lived on a farm. And that, that was almost like going to Disney World for me. I know a lot of you think that everybody who lives down south lives on a farm. It's not true. I was raised in small towns, so going to a farm, a real farm, was a big treat. And they had a son about my age, and we had the time of our lives, and it, at least for me. And we were in the woods and the fields, and while we were out in the woods, we decided to build a fort. And we were in this area that had rather sandy soil. It was a place that was just a seasonal stream, so it was dry at the time, easy to dig, and we dug a huge hole. At least it seemed huge to me. And we piled the dirt that we dug out of the hole all around, so we had this entrenchment. And then we went out into the woods and found fallen logs and piled those on top of the entrenchment so that we had the best fort that a couple of 10-year-olds have ever built. It was amazing. We were invincible. We built something. About a year or two later, my family went back to visit that family, and, you know, I was eager to go see what we had built, and I'm grabbing my friend, let's go. And he said, well, where are you going? I said, I don't know, let's just go. And he stopped and said, I know what you're looking for. It's not there. It was devastating. It was not there. In fact, we went to look, and there was no evidence that we had built anything. Obviously, it had rained, and the waters had flooded the place and carried away the logs and filled in the hole, and all of our work was for nothing. Now, how many of you know that we human beings don't stop seeking to build things with our life when we're 12 or 13? No, we're still like that. Don't you want your life to be constructed, to make a difference in the world, to have a, an impact that is lasting? And yet, so often, what we put our efforts into comes to nothing isn't that true if not coming to nothing at least sometimes it, it doesn't amount to what we thought it would it doesn't produce what our effort dictates should have been produced and we're left with disappointment now let's also recognize that some of us right here in this room are pretty high achievers and if people were to look at what we've done with our lives, they would say, wow, you have accomplished something. But you know, a lot of times, what enables us to achieve is not really healthy. Did you know some of us are driven by motivations that are not well-founded? Maybe somebody told us we weren't going to amount to anything, so all of our accomplishment and building is about proving them wrong and we proved them wrong but on the inside we're still a wreck and sometimes we even get brave enough to admit it and sometimes we get to a point in life especially when you're about my age when you know you might have success but you take stock of where you are and think wow what I've built is not really significant the life that i'm living is not really significant can i tell you this jesus came not only to bring light into any darkness in our world but to restore what has been destroyed to rebuild what has been torn down and israel itself is an example of that as they faced destruction for having wandered from God. But God's plan was not to leave them that way. 
And they had a prophet by the name of Isaiah. We've heard some of his writings tonight. And he prophesied hundreds of years before Jesus. And as he's making promises to Israel, he is by extension making promises to you and me, to all nations for all times, about God's agenda of restoration. How many of you have something in your life that you would like to see restored? Maybe it's just wholeness in our inner being, in our emotions, in relationships, or some other aspect of life. Well, there's hope. One verse, Isaiah 51, verse 3, among many. One verse that speaks of God's agenda to rebuild out of his compassion. God's agenda to bring you back to a place of wholeness and not just to leave you in a state of despair or maybe just discouragement but to bring you comfort and joy look for those words in this verse the lord will surely comfort zion and will look with compassion on on all her ruins you can put your own name in there the lord will surely comfort you and will look with compassion on any ruins that are in your life and look what he will do where did we mess up in the garden of eden but god says he will make her deserts like eden her wastelands like the garden of the lord joy and gladness will be found in her thanksgiving and the sound of singing that's why we sing here at victory church because we have joy doesn't mean everything is perfect in our lives but we know that the Lord has had compassion upon us and he's brought us his comfort and we have his joy. And that could be yours tonight too. If you're here without that, God wants to bring that kind of restoration into your life. And that's what the Christmas story is about, that Jesus has come into the world. God gave his only son that whoever believes in him will not perish, not be destroyed, not be ruined, but have everlasting life. And I want to invite you tonight to pray a prayer with me. I'm going to ask everybody here to pray it out loud together. And if you've never consciously surrendered your life to the free gift that is ours in Jesus, right now is the time to do it. Surrender your life to Jesus. Put him at the center and see what he does to bring restoration to your life. It won't all be overnight, but I can tell you this, in a moment you will be changed today is your day of salvation let's all pray this together bow your heads and close your eyes make these your own words not just religious words you say because the preacher's saying them surrender your heart to jesus let's give our hearts afresh to him let's come back to him if we need to come back to him say these words heavenly father i thank you for your love i believe jesus died he was raised from the dead and he is Lord I turn from all sin and I turn to you God forgive me fill me with your presence fill me with your peace fill me with your joy and help me live for you restore me God where I need to be restored thank you for receiving me as your very own child in Jesus name amen amen praise God give God a clap right now he's worthy and I believe a number of you made decisions for the Lord if you did make a decision for Christ or you're here and you don't have a Bible we want to get a Bible to you we have a table to the left just after you go out these auditorium doors stop there fill out a card that indicates you made a decision that way we can follow up with you and that's very important in our walk with jesus to do so together and we want to get that into your hands so be sure to stop by there tonight on your way out if you have prayed to receive christ or if you've come back to christ after having been away from him welcome to the family of god right now we're going to continue to see acted out before us a representation of the light of Christ having come into a dark world but Jesus didn't just confront the darkness by the light of his own life 
the Bible says that Jesus is the light of the world, but do you know what Jesus said? He said, you are the light of the world. And we have an ongoing responsibility and privilege to take the light of God's love and of, of His grace and mercy into a dark and hurting world around us that needs the message of good news, of God's love. And so what we're going to do right now is we're going to have our candle lighting ceremony, our candle lighting Christmas Eve portion of the service. And I want to make first of all sure, first of all, that all of you have a candle. Does everybody have a candle? If you don't, raise your hand. If you don't have a candle, raise your hand. And one of our ushers will get one of those to you. And hopefully you have a program. Because on the back of the program are the words to the song that we're going to sing by candlelight, Silent Night. So everybody has a candle. Let me very quickly give you some instructions. First of all, we'll, we, we want to make sure everybody's in place because what we're going to do is turn out all the lights in the auditorium. It's going to be very dark. Another couple of words because we're dealing with fire here. Uh, as we turn off the lights, you're going to see the one light of Jesus Christ. And some of these young people are going to light their candles from the Christ candle, and they'll be going through the auditorium to share the light, and they will be lighting the candles of the people seated at the ends of the rows. And then you will, in turn, light the candles of the people sitting next to you. We'll just pass the flame from one to another. So this is really important. Once your candle is lit, don't tilt it. Don't tilt your candle to light somebody else's because it will drip wax onto their leg or yours. You don't want to do that. Or you'll drip wax onto the chairs or the carpet. And if you do that, this man back here in the gray suit, <laughs> he will have to be here tomorrow to clean that all up. He thinks that's funny, yeah, but. All right, so you get the point. Hold it upright after it's lit and let the person who's lighting their candle angle theirs and then they will keep theirs upright. So, if we're in place, let us turn off all the lights, keep all the doors closed. And you can see a representation of the fact that the world is a dark place. But there is hope because there is light, the light of Christ. Let's begin to share his light. see if just a few of us will share the light of Christ in the world around us, it'll begin to make a huge difference. God's desire is to flood the entirety of his creation with the light of his goodness. And we have a role in spreading that light. As we've heard already through the scriptures, the knowledge of the glory of God will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. We have a part to play in making 
His light shine. And look at the difference it makes. Let's join together and sing Silent Night. Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child, holy infant so thing we want to do you know historically what you would do is process out of the building with the candles lit and we don't do that for safety's sake but we want to send you out as the light of the world we want to send you out with the light shining from you and we want to send you with joy the joy of the lord so let's stand right now we're going to close with a blessing a prayer and then we'll finish out with one more song and we're going to celebrate the good news of Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your blessing. Let your light shine on each one. Let your face shine on us. Be gracious to us. Give us peace. Protect us. Surround us with your love and let your love shine through us. Thank you for the joy that is ours through Jesus Christ. And everybody said Amen. Amen. Let's sing joy to the world. All right, let's clap, everyone. Joy to the world. Let her receive her King. 
today. Christmas Victory Church. We'll see you next week. You are dismissed.